feeling. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to virtual worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Silver Spring. My name is Preston Mears. I am this morning's worship associate, and appropriately for this service, I have dirt under my fingernails from planting seed potatoes in my garden. Our Unitarian Universalist living tradition invites us to explore spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions which celebrate the sacred circle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. Our children this morning will also pursue this theme as well when they go downstairs following our joys and concerns later in the service this morning. I am glad this morning to welcome Laura Powell Haney, who will lead today's service that includes a ritual celebrating this second blossoming of spring and renewed abundant growth. Laura served for nine years as Director of Religious Education at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Frederick. She graduated from Mead Lombard Theological School in May 2020, just a little while ago, and a Master of Divinity is her degree. Her study included a ministerial internship at Towson Unitarian Universalist Church and a chaplain residency in Hagerstown. She serves now as as part-time interim religious education coordinator for the UU Congregation of Wyoming Valley, Pennsylvania, and guest preaching in this area. Laura loves reading, drinking tea, creating stories, and standing barefoot on the earth, especially in springtime. Please join me in giving Laura a warm UUCSS welcome. I'd also like to welcome any guests or visitors in the congregation today, whether you're here virtually or in person, and whether you're, you're a long timer or here for the very first time. I'm so glad you've chosen to spend some of your Sunday morning with us. Do we have a welcoming captain here this morning? Hmm. Oh, you got it. All right. All right. And Mary Beth and people who are virtual can also uh, type in and chat to you and you will respond to that. So newcomers, welcome. We're glad you're here. Now it's time to greet one another across the platform divide. Those joining us by Zoom, please take a moment and turn your camera on. Now, those sitting in the sanctuary, turn to your right and wave to the camera to greet those joining us by Zoom. That's my left. <laughs> Finally, I invite everyone joining us by Zoom to wave to everyone here in the sanctuary. However, we come to worship. It's good to be together in community. I also want to thank all the volunteers who have helped make today's service possible. And later in the service, the screen will show the list of their names so you can thank them too. Now let us 
rise and join in singing our opening hymn, What Wondrous Love, it's number 18 in the gray hymnal. The words to all of the hymns will also be on the screen. Please join me in the words on the screen as we light our chalice and reaffirm our congregational commitment. May this light warm our hearts with loving and caring and guide us in the ways of truth. As we gather here for worship, we pledge ourselves to the endless search for truth, to the right of each to believe as mind, heart, and conscience dictate, to accept the responsibilities this freedom commands, and to implement our belief in the essential worth and dignity of every human being. to invite all the kids and anyone else who would like to come up to come join me up front. Thank you, Charlotte. I don't want to be alone up here. <laughs> There's other folks joining you behind you. <laughs> there you go. You guys can sit down. Charlotte, there you go. Perfect. Thank you for coming up. So do you guys know what May Day is? Have you ever celebrated May Day? No? Cool, awesome, because I have lots of information about May Day. So May Day is a celebration on May 1st, and there are traditions all around the world. 
So May Day isn't celebrated so much in the US anymore, but in other countries, May Day continues to be a really important and fun celebration. I want you to listen for some themes you hear in these May Day celebrations and see what similarities you notice. So the earliest May celebrations began in Rome between 240 and 238 BCE, and they were called Floralia, or the Festival of Flora. Flora was a goddess of, what might you guess? Flowers, exactly. Flora was the goddess of flowers, and a temple was dedicated to her so she would protect the flower blossoms. This festival included a theatrical performance with rabbits and goats and flowers and beans, beans, were thrown into the crowd. I'm pretty glad we don't do that anymore. Do you, I, I don't want to be throwing beans at anybody. Oh, thank you. In Scotland and Ireland, the festival of Beltane was started. Beltane means day of fire in Celtic because Bel was the god of the sun. During the winter months, the ancient Celts believed the sun was taken prisoner. So on Beltane, they lit bonfires to welcome back the sun and celebrate the transition from the dark winter to the summer. Are you noticing any themes so far? Flowers, sun, fire, not yet? Okay, keep listening. So in England, May Day was celebrated by dancing around a maypole, a tree or a stick with ribbons on it that would be woven into patterns as people danced around the pole. In the 19th and 20th centuries in the US, this turned into May Basket Day. People would drop off baskets with flowers and candies and treats on their neighbor's doorsteps. In Hawaii, May 1st is the official Lei Day. Do you guys know what Leis are? Yeah, what are they? Or what? Right, so it can be it can be used to mean rest, absolutely, and it's also a like necklace. Have you seen those necklaces of flowers that people maybe in Hawaii wear? Yep, so that's what they are celebrating. Lays are necklaces made of colorful flowers, and each island celebrates their own special styles of lay with special lay making demonstrations and celebrations. And then this one I included because I think it's super interesting. In Bulgaria on May 1st, Bulgarians celebrate Erminden, we're gonna say, Erminden. There's a legend that snakes and lizards in Bulgaria come out starting on March 25th, but the snake's king and leader comes out on May 1st. If people are working in the fields on that day, it is believed they will be bitten by a snake over the summer. So people who work in the fields take May 1st off and celebrate with bonfires to scare away the snakes. I'd be okay with that. It sounds like a pretty good holiday. So I hear a lot of differences in these stories, but they're also a There also are a lot of similarities. What similarities do you hear? Beautiful, they're all talking about spring or summer or the changing of the seasons, exactly. They're all celebrating spring in some way, whether it's because the snakes and lizards are coming out or because the flowers are blooming. Um, that's this holiday all around the world marks a special time of year when people all over the world all throughout history have um have a time together to be able to celebrate that this is a special time and changing of the year thanks guys for listening we are all going to go downstairs and some of us will talk about celebrating this special day and others of us are going to talk about taking care of the earth and about recycling and about fashion how do those things go together let's go find out i 
now invite you into a time of quiet, a time of centering, a time of personal reflection, meditation, or prayer. If you have suffered a deep loss in the last year, I invite you to stand or raise your hand during the silence so that the congregation may bear witness to your grief. May the light of our flaming chalice be a beacon when things seem dark. May the bonds of community strengthen our spirits. May the exuberance and beauty of the natural world awakening around us grant us hope, joy, and peace. Amen and blessed be. our opening, uh, not opening, the prayer hymn, as we call, um, we're going to divide the room into two halves again. We have a, a round with Return Again. You may have remember singing it before. I've divided the choir into two parts, so we'll have group A here, supported by half of the choir, this and over, and then group B going this way. But let's first sing it uh, together. Um, we can listen to the choir. Each part of uh, each of the two parts repeats once before you go to the other other part. But I think by instinct you'll get it. Um, let's and return again, return again, return.
As a religious community, it is good to worship together as a congregation of people of all ages. We know that we all learn from being in multi-generational community. As some of you continue, continue your religious exploration upstairs, our children and youth are invited to continue their religious exploration downstairs. As we sing our children, youth, and teachers to their classes, I invite the congregation to rise in body or in spirit, hold out your hands, and join in blessing them as we sing them on their way. A little tea. <laughs> hmm. Our reading this morning is titled A Blessing for Spring by Walt Franklin. Only the winds of spring can open the anemone, wrote Pliny. Windflower, mayflower, nimbleweed, anemone, kinkifolia, the wind god's name in spring. Five white petals, three part leaves. The ancients picked them chanting prayers. Help us to protect these waters, these wild lands you open on, instill in us the powers to contain the ooze of mines, the excrement of need. Protect these aquifers and springs of highland rock, the breath of winds we blossom by. <laughs> Before I begin, I want to make sure you each have a bit of string, some of the yarn from back there, if you would like to participate in our knot tying ritual. That's part of what we're doing here next. So if you don't have one and want one, please just raise your hand. Thank you, Jen. Beltane is a celebration of the wild and abundant fertility of spring when the natural world exuberantly lets loose with growth and new life. In early celebrations, communities would come together for feasting, dancing, and rekindling their individual hearth fires from the celebratory bonfires as an act of community. This moment is when so much of the winter work of looking inward, resting, contemplating, can come to fruition. Our ritual today will include tying knots to welcome growth in our own lives and in this community, and healing for ourselves and our earth. If it helps, imagine this as a physical representation of your inward mental and spiritual intention. We'll begin by grounding and centering ourselves in the here and now. Or now. Create a protective circle with song. Invite the four traditional elements to bear witness and participate. Visualize what it is we wish to manifest. Create a working, a hands-on craft of tying knots to bind these manifestations to our will. 
sit in silence for a moment, then release the elements and come back to our own time and place. Let us begin. Settle in your seats. Notice your breath. Just notice. Feel your feet on the ground. Now imagine roots emerging from the bottom of your feet, reaching down, down into the earth, through the floor and the foundation to the earth underneath. Imagine the roots spreading wider and deeper, tapping into the energy deep down. Imagine that energy is yellow light rising up the roots to your feet, to your belly, to just under your heart. Let that yellow glow rest there. Now from the top of your head, imagine branches sprouting. Imagine them growing tall and strong, rising up through the roof here into the sky and the open air. Imagine the energy of sun and wind as blue light running down the branches to your head, to your neck, to just above your heart. Let the blue glow rest there. Now, let the yellow light from below and the blue light from above merge at your heart. Imagine the two colors of light blending and becoming green, growing and growing until it surrounds you and joins with the light of everyone here, everyone joining us online. Rest in that green light for a moment. When you are ready, let the branches above withdraw and disappear within you. Let the roots below withdraw and disappear within you. Let that green light surrounding this community return to your heart and glow there as we begin our ritual in celebration of the beauty of Beltane. If your eyes are closed, you may open them again.
We begin in the east. So if you'd like to turn in each direction as I name it, please do so. Hail to the air, hail to the east. Blow in new light, let darkness cease. Be with us in circle today. Join us as we honor the way. We bid you hail and welcome. Ellen? Thank you. Well done. Fire to the south, which I usually turn this way, but I'm going to lean to the mic. Hail to fire, hail to the south. Enliven the words that come out of our mouths. Be with us in circle today. Join us as we honor the way. We bid you hail and welcome. Hail and welcome to the west. Hail to the water, hail to the west. May our emotions today be blessed. Be with us in circle today. Join us as we honor the way. We bid you hail and welcome. And since I committed that to south, I'm going to face that way for north. <laughs> hail to the earth, hail to the north, growing, greening, and sending forth. Be with us in circle today. Join us as we honor the way. We bid you hail and welcome. And now the work. That's with a capital W, a magical working. Using your yarn or ribbon or thread, whatever you happen to have on hand, for those of you at home, if you don't have a particular fancy kind of string, a shoelace will do. Just remember that you took it out of the shoe beforehand. I invite you to create a healing, growth, abundance, braid, bracelet, or knot chain. It could be for yourself, it could be for someone else, or some being else. Don't forget your fur, feathered, scaled family. Don't forget the green earth outside. Trees seem to like it when you place things upon them. We'll form nine knots in total to infuse these bindings with our abundant intent and focus our energy on that healing or growth we want to accomplish. Please take a moment to call to mind the area of healing or growth you wish to create. Now take the ring, a yarn or string or ribbon you have chosen in your hands, keeping what you want to manifest clear in your head and your heart and begin. We will pause briefly after each knot and sit in silence for one minute after all the knots are complete. By knot of one, the work's begun. By not of two, I make it true. By not of three, so mote it be. By not of four, this love I'll store. By not of five, this work is alive. By not of six, this hope I fix.
by knot of seven, energy I eleven. By knot of eight, it will be fate. By knot of nine, what's worked is mine. And the work is complete. Carry this working with you in the season to come as a reminder of your own power to create, to heal, to grow, and as a reminder that we gain strength and energy by working together, by working together. Abundance, hope, and equity for all. We release the elements we have invited to join us to earth. Thanks to the earth, thanks to the north for the gifts of growing, greening, and sending forth. Stay if you will, go if you must. We bid you hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Thanks to the water, thanks to the west for the gift of our emotions today, blessed. Stay if you will, go if you must. We bid you hail and farewell. Thanks to the fire, thanks to the south for the gifts of the words that come out of our mouths. Stay if you will, go if you must. We bid you hail and farewell. Thanks to the air, thanks to the east, for the gifts of new light, letting darkness cease. Stay if you will, go if you must, we bid you hail and farewell. My knot fell down. I don't know what that means. Our ritual is complete. The work is just beginning. Feel yourself in the here and now again. Maybe look around a little. Knowing you carry within you and knowing you are surrounded by all you need to make your working come to pass. Thank you. As the Reverend Brandy Lovely used to say, for offering, let there be an offering to sustain and strengthen this place, which is sacred to so many of us, a community of memory and of hope, for we are now keepers of the dream. 
As you can see on the screen, there are many ways to give your gift to UUCSS. If you are here in person, you can place an offering in one of the offering plates as it's passed around during the music that will begin in just a moment. May our hearts grow as we practice generosity together and as we help to keep the dream of a better world alive. The offering will now be given and received with gratitude. month of May, that lovely month where everyone goes blissfully astray. tra -la, it's here, that shocking time of year, when tons of wicked little thoughts merrily appear. It's May, it's May, that gorgeous holiday, when every maiden prays that her lad will be a cad. It's mad, it's gay, a libelous display. Those dreary vows that everyone takes, everyone breaks, everyone makes divine mistakes. The last Fragrance wafting through the air. What sweet feelings does it send transmute? What's this perfume floating everywhere? Don't you know it's that dear forbidden fruit? La 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 la, that dear forbidden fruit. Tra la 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 la. Dusty month of May, that darling month when everyone throws self-control away. It's time to do a wretched thing or two, and try to make each precious day one you'll always rue. It's May, it's May, the month of yes you may, the time for every frivolous whim, proper or im. It's wild, it's gay, a blot in every way. The birds and bees with all of their vast, amorous past gaze at the human race and gasp the mercy. Lusty month of May, that lovely month where everyone goes blissfully astray. Tra la, it's here, that shocking time of year, when tons of wicked little thoughts everybody appear. It's May, it's May, the month of great despair, when all the world is brimming with fun, wholesome. It's mad, it's gay, a libelous display. When dreary thoughts that everyone takes, everyone breaks, everyone makes the mistakes. Yes, indeed. Tina. A 
announcements. Our church is not only the organization that puts together these services, we are a vibrant community of volunteers and staff, a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and a part of the global UU denomination. Visitors are welcome to stay on this same Zoom meeting and join us for our virtual coffee hour after the service to learn more about us. Today, there are three announcements. The annual business meeting of the Unitarian Universalist Association is happening both online and in person in Portland, Oregon from June 22nd to the 26th. <coughs> UUCSS may designate up to five people as delegates, which means they are granted official voting privileges on behalf of our church. If you would like to attend General Assembly either online or in person, uh, would you please send an email to the board at uucss.org. Also, the church has some financial assistance available to the cost of registration if that's holding you back from signing up. Please reach out to Reverend Kristen if you'd like financial assistance. Okay. Number one announcement. Number two is an announcement about our lay-led summer worship services. This summer's theme is, quote, beyond words, the wisdom of music. We've just experienced that, right? <laughs> so if you got a song or a band or symphony or opera that's changed your life or shaped your spirituality or ethics, please let Reverend Kristen know. All service leaders will have the support of a worship associate, not just me, some others as well, tech director, sound volunteers, and musicians. So again, please send an email to minister at UUCSS.org if you're interested in leading a service this summer. Third announcement. Mark your calendars. The UUCSS annual meeting is scheduled for the first Sunday in June, June 5th. All members who have made a contribution of record are eligible to vote in the election of board members, passing next year's budget and any other matters outlined in the agenda will be sending out in a few weeks. The next Sunday, June 12th, is our flower ceremony. So meeting June 5th, flower ceremony June 12th. And that will be followed by a fun party to celebrate all we've done together as a congregation this year. We hope to see you there. And that ends the announcements. Our closing hymn, number 73, Chant for the Seasons. I think it would be helpful if you can grab your gray hymnals and you can see the four, if you have one close to you, turn to number 73, and we'll see there are four chants for the four seasons, and we're singing summer from the, uh, from the perspective of spring. So we'll sing the summer words, because we're actually in the spring leading into the summer. And I think if we can get the words up there, beautiful. Um, so we can, we'll sing it once. You can sing uh, together with me in the choir, and we'll have a short, short intro, but we'll, we'll do a second time so you can have a chance to sing that together with me. So let's, let's, uh, let's rise in body or in spirit and sing number 73. So go ahead.
Please join me in the words of chalice extinguishing. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. This morning, we have created something beautiful in community. May beauty walk beside you. May beauty dwell within you. May beauty shape your words and deeds. May the beauty, energy, love, and hope of Beltane, of May Day, grow within you until the longest day, Litha, Midsummer, the summer solstice. Go in peace, singing. Thank you.